before you spoke it to me. You were the King of Kings. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. And now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out. We join them as we sing. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name all my days, all my days. So let my whole life be a blazing offering, a life to shout and sing the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be church. Good morning morning, everybody that's here. Good morning everybody watching at home. Good morning to good afternoon to all of you that chose to watch us after the Seahawks game. That's right. I know you're I know you're out there. Um, It's good to be together this morning. Um, glad, good to be able to worship this morning. Um, uh, it's, you know, I, I think it's one of those mornings where it's hard for people to get out with you know, just the, the, the gray and then the smoke and, and everything. But I was thinking about it this morning. And you know, in the Old Testament, when, like, when the smoke and the, 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 uh, God's presence there, was, that was like when, when worship was at its best. So I'm praying that worship will be at its best for us this morning even, uh, with a limited number of people here. Um, and that as you're worshiping at home, that uh, they just really feel the presence of God and that we'll sense the presence of God as we worship together here. So um, let's just pray. God, we do just thank you um, that you are with us, God. Um, God, we we, uh, pray for our our brothers and sisters uh, in Washington, Oregon, California, just that are that are not able to meet this morning because of fires and um, and just for for all the people that are affected by those um, God, we, we have to put up with the inconvenience of smoke, but it's a, it's a much smaller price than what many of other, others are facing, God. So we just remember those people, ask for you to be watching over them, protecting them, uh, protecting those that are fi- fighting the fires, um, and just, uh, yeah, um, may, may, we, may we be remindful of our brothers and sisters um, this morning, even as we come together and worship together, God. Um, thank you for this time, and may it be meaningful, and may it be a blessing to you. And may you bless us through it as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to stand and sing and praise the Lord this morning. Turn your ear to heaven and hear the noise inside. Sound of angels are the sound of angel songs in all this for a king. We could 
join and sing all to Christ the King how constant how divine this song of ours will rise oh how constant how divine this love of ours will rise no praise him Come, it's the sound of rescue ones and all this for a king. Angels join to sing, all for Christ the King. How infinite and sweet this love so rescuing. How infinitely sweet this great love that has redeemed. No praise Him, no praise Him. He is holy, He is holy. No praise. Let 
exalted. He is exalted. Sing blessing. Blessing and honor, glory and power unto the Lord be praised. Sing with the chorus resounding before us, holy is His name. Blessing and honor, glory and power. Lord be praised. Sing with the chorus resounding before us only is His name, His name. Sing Yahweh, Yahweh. Blessing and honor, blessing and honor, glory and power unto the Lord be praised. Sing with the chorus resounding before us, holy is His name. Blessing and honor. Glory and power unto the Lord be praised. Sing with the chorus resounding before us, holy is His name. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple, and attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And they are calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with with smoke and then I said it's all over I'm doomed for I'm a sinful man and I have filthy lips and I live among a people with filthy lips and yet I've seen the king Yahweh of heaven's armies and then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal and he had touched taken with the altar with a pair of tongs and he touched my lips with it and said see this coal has touched your lips and your guilt is removed your sins are forgiven And I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to his people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Hmm. God, I just thank you for bringing this passage to my mind this morning to just tie so many different themes just as we're singing in worship of you being exalted as we'll be talking about being sent out on mission, even, even the temple being filled with smoke. God, just so many things that you bring together this morning in our minds. God, I just pray that that two things, that we would have a sense of your holiness. We may not have this vision that Isaiah had, but may we have a sense of who you are, that you are the exalted God, that you are far above us, God. May we have a sense of fear of you, knowing who you are and who we are, God. But we also, may we just hear that fear not from you you as you remove our sins by the blood of Jesus. And may that just make us eager to go out with your message. And may we say, here am I, send me. Send us, God, send us out on your mission. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to go ahead and pray for one another. Today, so obviously, we prayed for people affected by the fires and continue to pray for that. Um, are there other prayer requests?
uh, that you have you'd like prayer for. And once again, this is online, so uh, this is going out online, so you can think about that before you share if you don't want something shared out on the, on the internet. Yeah, Esther? So, so we pray for, for Esther's family um, and then also for Bob and Esther as they prepare to move uh, down to La yeah. yep. Okay, Shelter Bay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, anybody else? Yeah, Junior? Nothing. Okay. Uh, all right. Anybody else have anything you want prayer for? Yeah, Les? pray for Les's wife, Lucille, so she has um, some lung issues, and so both with smoke and with the threat of COVID, just be praying for her and for protection. Okay. Anybody else? All right, um, let's just take a couple minutes um, to pray together. Um, yeah. God, I do just pray for uh, for Bob and for Esther, God, as they they move. God, I just God, you have led them in their whole lives as they have served you, as they have served on the mission field. Um, and God, we just pray for your continue leading. God, may you be watching over them and caring for them, and they just may they just know your presence. God, and we just um, pray that you would be helping Esther's family too as they adjust to new changes and and, and roles and jobs. Um, with, uh, yeah, with all the changes that have happened in the world and just for all of us that are facing these changes, God, may you be leading us and may we just not be overwhelmed by those things, but may we use them uh, more effectively for you and for your kingdom. And God, we do pray for Lucille, God, and, and um, with everything going on, we haven't been able to see her here in person, um, but we... Uh, we know that she is a part of us, and, and we love her, um, and, and you love her, God. And so may she just sense, first and foremost, your love, um, but may she also sense our love um, through you, God. Um, yeah, may you protect her um, and just protect her lungs. And um, and just as, as Les said, that they, they don't fear God, help them to, to walk the balance of, of uh, not being fearful, but... Um, acting appropriately and just give them wisdom on, on what that means and what that looks like, God. That, um, and yeah, and just really that's a prayer for all of us, God, just as we, even last week we talked about not living in fear and that we don't operate from fear, God. Um, but we also don't want to, to be reckless, God. So help us to be wise without being fearful um, and just be leading us in all that we do, God. And and then just once again, we may we just be mindful of our... our, our um, Fellow, fellow people that are affected by these fires, God. Um, 
may you continue to protect them and continue to be with them. And, and may we, we just ask for an end to these fires, God. We ask for rain or for the firefighters to get under control or whatever it takes, God. But may you be hoping to put an end um, to these things, God. Um, we ask all of these things, God. Most importantly, we ask that your will be done. Not our will, but your will be done on earth that is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and go forward in our, in our service. Um, if you would like to worship by giving, you can give online at bcfgiving.churchcenter.com uh, um, or you can drop an offering into the, the bucket in the back on your way out if you're here in person. Um, or you can continue to mail your checks if you'd rather write a check. You can mail your checks to the church office as well at 902 Adelia Street. Um, yeah. Um, for parents that are here the, and for children that are here, there's um, resources on the back wall. There's the bags that, that, that have um, a few little goodies in them and some kids' notes. I did uh, have gotten a system where I uh, can get prizes out to kids. So kids, if you do your kids' notes, you can show them to me after the sermon and get a prize. Um, and... Um, yeah, and, and also there's the back rooms. That's what I was trying to think of. The back rooms, if, if parents, if, uh, if you want to step out with your, your, your kiddos um, into the elementary room or to the toddler room, there's a live stream of the service playing. Um, and so you can watch that um, while uh, giving your kid a little bit more freedom to, to move about. So, yeah, um, let's go ahead and continue. I say continue in the book of Matthew today, but really what I should say is let's wrap up the book of Matthew today. So... Two and a half years, 103 sermons later, we will be finishing the book of Matthew today. <laughs> how, many people, how many people are like excited to be finishing the book of Matthew and like are ready to move on to something else? How many people are, are, are sad to be leaving Matthew? Only one. <laughs> Two. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, going back through, yeah, just looking. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed going through. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm in both camps. I've really enjoyed going through. Like, I, I, even when Ruichi would preach and take a long time, it'd take even longer than me to go through books. That never really bothered me that much because I really like digging in. But I'm also, like, excited to, to jump into to something else as well. Whoops. There we go. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been good, though. I've, I feel like I've gained so much as we've gone through, through and, and that's why, you know, I share this all the time, but that's what I love. My favorite thing about preaching is, is not, like, being up here preaching. I think it's the, like, just really getting, uh, kind of being forced, in a sense, to dig in really deep into Scripture and, and, and prayerfully and everything, and just seeing what God reveals to me and then getting to share that with you all. So I've, been, I've really enjoyed that in the book of Matthew. Um, and excited, we're going to, uh, uh, a lot of people are wondering what we're going to do, we're going to uh, be going into Philippians uh, next week, so um, yeah, it, uh, I'll talk more about that, I guess, next week. So, uh, Matthew, so we're finishing up Matthew, um, and we're going to be finishing up the, the end of Matthew, it's probably one of the most famous, if not the most famous passage in the book of Matthew, um, we, know, we call it the Great Commission. Um, and you remember that the setting is, is that, that Jesus is risen from the dead. He appeared to the women last week at the tomb, and he told the women, go get the disciples. Um, and and so, he, so the resurrected Jesus hasn't appeared to the disciples yet, and that's what's going to happen here at the end. Um, and he's going to be commissioning the disciples uh, to continue doing what he's doing. And he's very thorough in his commission. Um, and, and so he's going to answer these key six questions um, that, that we kind of have uh, just in general uh, it, whenever we read something. So to help us remember what these questions is, I found this helpful thing as I was searching what the name of these questions are. So just, you can watch this for just a second to help us out here. Six questions wrap. When you read, when you write, there are six questions to keep in mind. When you read, when you write, there are six questions to keep in mind. Who, what, when? to keep in mind. 
All right, so you got those. Who, what, when, where, how, and why. Doesn't that guy look like Rod Smith, too? <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks that? <laughs> Um, all right, uh, so, so Jesus is going to answer those questions, and, and, and we're going to look at those questions that, that as Jesus commissions his disciples, uh, that he's going to answer and, and, and gives this mission out to them, that he's going to be, be talking about the who, what, when, where, how, and why of this mission uh, that he's sending them out on it. So that's what we're going to look at today. So you, if, you, if you're following along with your little sermon notes, you see they look a little different today. Instead of filling the blanks, we just have those six questions. So let's go ahead and open up to Matthew 28, and we'll start in verse 16. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. All right, so um, Jesus hasn't, hasn't quite appeared yet, but, it, but the disciples are going there, and, and already um, we have an answer to one of our questions. So is this, who, where, what? I messed it up now. <laughs> Who, what, when, where, how, or why? Which one is this? Why and how? Why and how? Uh, not quite. Where. Not the, the where. This is a tricky one. It does, it, it's kind of a where. Like if you're talking about the story, it's a where. But it's not uh, the where for like where the disciples are supposed to go on their mission. So we're going to save where for later. So is a no. So, so who, but real quick, I do want to say something about the where there, where there. All right, um, so it says the mountain that Jesus uh, told them, or uh, had Jesus told them to go, um, what's uh, interesting, and this is not really important, but it's interesting, is that like in the story, Jesus didn't ever tell them to go to a mountain. Um, and the way that, that it's worded in Greek is they, uh, he, they went to the mountain where Jesus instructed them. And so some people think that it's like Jesus had told them to go mountain and we're just not told about it. And that's one way you could read it. Another way you could read it is that they're going back to the place where the Sermon on the Mount was. You remember the Sermon on the Mount was Jesus' first kind of preaching, teaching as there in Galilee um, and, and where Jesus kind of gave his longest sermon, his first sermon and stuff. And so they're kind of going to that place of Jesus' instruction uh, to meet with him. You know, that they go to Galilee are like, where should we go in Galilee? Well, the mountain where he instructed us, that, that's a good place to go. And then they meet him there. So you could read it either way. Um, I don't really know which one's the better way to read it, but I kind of like the, the picture of it going, being the Sermon on the Mount and everything. But not too important. But the question that is answered there is who? Is who is this, this uh, mission given to? And it's given uh, to the disciples, but, um, you know, spoiler alert here, what Jesus is going to tell them is to go and make disciples. And so if, if, they're spo- if the disciples are supposed to make disciples, then it's kind of implied that those disciples are supposed to make disciples, and those disciples are supposed to make disciples, and those disciples are supposed to make disciples. And so who is this mission really given to? To all Christians. To all Christians. To all the disciples all the way down. And I, I, this, one, this is a thought that always just gets to me that I think is, is just so cool. It's like, just when you think of like 2,000 years of church history, you know, like, we're the disciples of 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 Jesus, right? Like that, that, that there's, uh, that, 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 that our faith goes all the way back to Jesus. And yes, I think there's, you know, things that, that, that creep in. I think there's, even in the, the American church, we like to think, oh yeah, we follow Jesus purely, but there's syncretism just like there is in any culture and everything. But, but, in, but in certain aspects, our faith, our understanding of God goes all the way back uh, to, to Jesus himself and, and everything. And, and we are all called on this mission that, that, that Jesus gives, that, that, that this is not just a commission for, for pastors or for elders or for missionaries, but this is a mission that Jesus is going to give today, uh, uh, that, that he gives to us today, that we're all supposed to live out, that, that we're all called to do. And I think this can be difficult for us um, because... Uh, um, some of, uh, some of us feel like, uh, have a feeling that I think that's something we can all relate to. So I have another little video, double video day. Uh, see if this is something that you feel like you, you've experienced in your life. Standing there with a weird face. <laughs> Why is that playing? It played earlier when I tried it. Hmm. Let's try it one more time. Who? All Christians. There we go. All right, you've got first pick. No, you go first. All right. James. Stacy. We'll take Natalie. Matt. Uh, Whitney. All right. Daniel. (laughs) Really? Yeah. We'll take Hector. Who 
Who's gonna finish mowing the lawn? All right. Anyone ever been there before? Been the last picked, right? And it, even when you, even if you're not last picked, you you know, remember being bad on the playground or in those things, and like you're you're in the lineup and you're wondering like, am I gonna be last? And like all your insecurities start welling up inside of you and everything. Anybody relate to that? Is that just me? Right? <laughs> like I think we, that we all experienced that. And the reason I bring that up is I think that sometimes when we talk about uh, Jesus commissioning all of us, all Christians, is that it can kind of well up some of those same things, those, those insecurities, those feelings like, I'm not good enough. I'm not, I'm not a good enough Christian for, for, for Jesus to use. Like, yeah, I recognize that he calls all of us, but, but, but you know, I don't have enough faith. I'm not, I'm not a strong enough believer uh, and everything. And what I love about this is when you look back at this, this, uh, this passage that we just looked at, is it says here that all the disciples go to the mountain um, and when they saw him, they worship him, but some of them doubted, right? Like, and that's, that's kind of an amazing thing to think about, like that, that his disciples, um, like some of them doubted that, that he's there. Like they're in his presence, they're in the resurrected presence, and yet they still struggle with doubt. And yet Jesus doesn't, when he goes and, and, and starts talking to them, he sa- doesn't say, well, you guys that, that don't doubt, you guys are the ones I'm sending out. He talks to all of them, to the ones that doubt, the ones that, that, whose faith isn't quite strong enough, the ones who have questions, the, one, the ones who are still struggling, right? And even as we look at the disciples throughout the book of Matthew, like have they been stellar uh, people? Have they been really people even to look up to? No, they've, they've doubted Jesus. They've misunderstood Jesus. They've argued with Jesus. They abandoned Jesus. They, they weren't there for him. They, didn't, they couldn't even pray with him when he really wanted them to. Like over and over again, they fight over who's supposed to be the greatest. They, they, they have all these issues, all these problems throughout the book, right, of Matthew. And yet Jesus says, I want you to go. I'm sending you. And so, so when, when we recognize this, like, I think our, our first response, we can say, yeah, I know Jesus is sending all Christians, but, but, but I'm just not good enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not whatever enough, is to say the disciples weren't whatever enough. The disciples weren't strong enough. The disciples weren't, weren't good enough. The disciples uh, uh, weren't enough, and yet Jesus chose to send them as well. And so Jesus is sending you. Jesus is calling you to be a part of this mission. It does has nothing to do with, uh, with who you are, because it has everything to do with who he is. And that really brings us to the next uh, little question that we're going to see answered here. So Jesus come, uh, came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So what question is this? Is this who, what, when, where, how, or why? What? Not quite what yet. The, the, the who we already answered, the who is the disciples. So, so what part of the commission is this? The why. This is the why of the commission. Because, uh, whoops, I guess I need to put this on the screen. Why? Um, because Jesus has authority over everything, that is why we are sent out on mission. Right? I think oftentimes um, the way that we approach the story of Scripture the way that we approach things in the North American church is we get very focused on, on you know, getting people to, to give their hearts to Jesus. Have you accepted Jesus? Have you, um, have you, have you given yourself to Jesus? And, and, um, and there's not, that's not wrong, but it's not the fullness of it, right? Like our mission isn't to get people to give their hearts to Jesus. Our mission is to proclaim the authority of Jesus over everything, right? The book of Matthew, if there's one thing that I hope you take away, you know, after, after two and a half years, if there's one thing that I hope you can take away is that the book of Matthew is about the authority of Jesus. It's about Jesus as the king, that, that he was the king that was ex- uh, expected, um, that, that he stepped into that role, that he fulfilled that role, that he was the Messiah, and that he was proclaiming God's kingdom to the world, and he was inviting people to come take part and be a part of God's kingdom and ultimately showed that the way that, that we enter into that kingdom, that we become a part of that kingdom is by, uh, is by trusting in him and his death and his resurrection. But, that, but that's what the book of Matthew is about, is about Jesus taking the authority that he has as king. And we've seen that over and over throughout the book of Matthew. He has, Jesus has been shown to have authority to forgive sins, authority over creation, authority to... Um, 
Let's see, what are the other things? Uh, to, to heal, to cast out evil spirits, the authority to teach. Like these things have been talked about over and over again throughout the book of Matthew, that Jesus has authority. And so, so the, the why of why we go out on mission, why we, why we tell people about Jesus, why we tell people about things is because we are recognizing the kingship and the authority that Jesus has, and we are to go out and proclaim it, right? It's a little bit, you know, I used this analogy a few weeks ago, like after the Civil War, when the Union Army would go through the South and say to the slaves, uh, you are free because the Confederate, the Confederate States of America are not, do not have authority here anymore. The United States have authority, and so you have been set free. You are freed. That is what we are doing, is we are going into a world, and we are saying the, the, the king, the things that have ruled over this world, the evil, sin, the sickness, the, the things that have ruled over this world no longer rule that Jesus is king. And so accept his authority. Step into his kingship. Trust in him. Trust in, in, in the things that, that he says. Walk in his authority. That is what we are doing. That is, is the why of, of, of this mission, is, is because Jesus has authority. And he goes on, and he says, Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. All right, so what, what question is this? There's actually a couple here. Huh? What? Yeah, the what. This is the what. And what is the what? What are we supposed to do? Make disciples. Make disciples. Um, and right, this is, there's a very intentionality in this, right? That, that we are supposed to intentionally be working to make disciples. Now, what is a disciple? A follower of Christ, right? It's one who has put Christ first, put him on that place of authority as king over their lives, uh, as, as they've put Christ first in their lives. And so we are supposed to help people recognize the authority of God, the, the brokenness and evil in the world, and how, how Jesus as the king addresses that. Um, and we're supposed to help people be able to follow Jesus as that king and to, to, to make disciples, to make followers of Jesus, uh, uh, make followers of people, followers of Jesus. Um, yeah, um, and then he talks about two specific ways that we do that. What are the two specific ways that he says? So he says, make disciples of all the nations doing what? Te uh, yeah, teaching them all, uh, to obey all I have commanded you. And, the, and before that he said, and baptizing them. So baptizing and teaching. There we go, baptizing and teaching. All right. So, we've talked a little bit about baptism before. I'm not going to do a, a whole uh, thing on it, uh, on it, because obviously I'm doing a whole message of uh, this, so it's just a little piece. But, um, but so I'm going to be oversimplifying, I think, baptism for the sake of time. But baptism, uh, what is baptism? Okay, an outward showing of an inward decision, right? An inward, uh, it's, it's, it's a symbol you have put trust in Christ, that you have made him king. It's, it's a symbol that your old self has died with Jesus and raised to life with Jesus, that you are joined with Christ, that you are a part of God's people. Um, now, do you need to be baptized to be a Christian? No. Do you need a wedding to get married? No, you don't need a wedding to get married. But who would say... Um, that, that, that at your wedding, that something kind of real and powerful uh, took place. That is, is a wedding just, is a, is a wedding unimportant? No, a wedding's not unimportant, right? Something really happens there, and yet it's also symbolic of what's really, hap of what's really happened, right? And this isn't a perfect analogy, but I think this is kind of like baptism, right? Is, is we don't want to overemphasize baptism and say that you have to be baptized to be saved, because then we make baptism a work. But we also don't want to be dismissive of baptism. There's something real and significant, I believe, that happens in baptism that, that, that it's not required to be saved, but it's, it's showing what, what, what has happened. And I, that I often feel like when you're baptized, you have a very real recognition and experience of what's going on and everything. It's not like a, 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 it's magic, but it's like a wedding, right? Like I made the commitment to Anne before our wedding, 
in a sense, but our wedding symbolized, our wedding solidified it. It was a symbol to the world around that, that I was committed to Anne and she was committed to me. Um, it, was a, it was a symbol to each of us, to, to one another, and a symbol to ourselves of what was taking place. And it was a very real experience as well. And the same thing with baptism, right? And so, um, you know, I know like uh, there, there's different reasons that people don't have weddings and everything, but, but we commonly have weddings because of what they, they, they mean, of the significance and of the power that they really kind of do have. And the same thing with baptism is, is there's occasionally reasons that people have for, for not getting baptized, but I think that, that, you know, Jesus doesn't seem to make much uh, uh, consideration of that here, and, 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 and the general command is that we should be baptized. And so I'd encourage you, if you're a believer of Jesus, um, then you haven't been baptized, to consider being baptized, and you can talk to me to just find out more about, like, all the meaning of it, what, what all it is, but I encourage you to do that as a follower of Jesus, that there is something kind of real and powerful about it, but it's not something that we do in order to be saved. Um, and that, 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 that should be our, 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 our thing, is that we, we want people to have this commitment. We want people to have this experience. We want people to have this trust in Jesus. And so as we, we interact with people, um, the, like we encourage them to be baptized to show the experience that they've had of, of putting their trust in Jesus, of, of following him as the, 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 the king and the, the uh, authority over their, their lives and over the world, and that they have, have died with him and, and risen with him. And so we're supposed to baptize them. Um, once again, it's something we're all called to do. We're all called to, to go and, and tell people about Jesus, invite them to be part of his kingdom, invite them to be baptized as, as part of his kingdom. And then the second thing it says is that we're supposed to teach them, right? We're supposed to teach them. And what are we supposed to teach them? You guys remember? Back to the verse here. Teach them. What? To obey all his commands. Um, Right? So, uh, once again, Jesus is the authority over everything. So we're teaching teaching people to walk, what it means to walk in the authority of Jesus. To walk and obey in obedience to him. Um, and, and what are, what is Jesus' commands, right? Well, ultimately, Jesus' commands is the whole teaching of Scripture, right? Now, we have specifically his teachings, like, in the book of Matthew, of his Sermon on the Mount, things like that, but as the Word of God, the Word of God in flesh, ultimately, uh, teaching them all that Jesus commanded is teaching the full counsel of Scripture, right? That's why we take two and a half years to go through a book of the Bible, why we don't just hop around on the things that we want to talk about is because we, we believe that we're supposed to teach all that Jesus has commanded, not just the things that are comfortable or easy to talk about, but all that Jesus has commanded. Um, and once again, this is something we are all called to do. You notice all the alls in this passage, right? Like all authority has been given to me. Teach and obey all I commanded you. Um, yeah, we'll see other alls even as we go through, right? There's, there's lots of alls in this passage, right? Um, so um, if we're supposed to, to teach that, um, there's, there's an important thing. So in Nevaeh, um, if mom said, you know, I'm really busy um, with school today, so I'm going to put you in charge of teaching junior, and I'm going to t- have you teach him addition. How would you do that? You don't know? Do you think you could do it? No? <laughs> huh? You tell him all the answers. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's one way of doing it. Maybe he can figure it out. All right, so, so you'd have a method of teaching, teaching uh, this. Do you, could, you do, could you do this page, Nevaeh, this problem page up here? All right. Um, now, now Nevaeh, imagine mom said, okay, so Junior's got a little bit uh, more advanced. So today I want you to teach him the Leonard Bolesco equation for homogenous stellar systems. Um, would you be able to do that one? <laughs> is, there, is there anybody in here that could do this? No. I was curious. I thought there might be somebody, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, why, why can't any of us teach somebody this? Because we have to know it first, right? None of us know it. I don't even know. I just found this on the internet. I don't even know what it is, but it's a thing, <laughs> uh, right? None of, us, none of us know this. To be able to teach something, you have to be able to know it. And I think that this you know, like, like, when you look at this, it's just like, oh, like, I don't, like, I don't even know, I don't even understand how to understand this, right? Um, like, there's symbols in there that I know, and then there's other symbols that it's like, what does that symbol mean? I don't know that. Huh? Um, I don't know. Well, it'd be like, 
uh, I think phys uh, applied physics because it's for stellar systems. So, um, yeah. But anyway, like, but I think that this is how many people view the Bible, right? That you look at it and it seems just like, like, I don't even, I can't even begin to fathom this. I can't even understand where to start with this. And yet, if we are called to teach others the full counsel of Jesus, to teach uh, others the full counsel of Scripture, it's our job to be working to understand it. Now, now none of us are going to understand Scripture perfectly. Like, you know, I have a master's degree in biblical studies. I've studied a lot. And there's things I, like, you know, like I can spend my whole life studying Scripture, and there will always be new things that I'm getting, always new things that I'm gathering, right? So it's not something that's ever we're perfected at, but it should be something that we desire to do so that we can more fully obey that authority, that we can better teach. And it, and it doesn't mean that everybody has to be able to, you know, read Greek or Hebrew or that you have to, you know, read through a whole bunch of commentaries and stuff, but just spending time in Scripture daily. Like, even if it's just a, a few paragraphs or a chapter, right? Are you in the Word of God? Are you learning? Are you growing it? Are you able to understand it, when you have questions, do you come to, to me or to others uh, that, that, you, that you respect that can help you to understand it more? Are you being a disciple, being made a disciple by learning more so that you're better equipped to make disciples by teaching more? Right? Or do you just get too busy for this? And I think it's important that, that, you, that we are individually in the Word. Like, it's good to listen to messages. And, you know, there's lots of good sermons available online, lots of good speakers, you know, where we have... Uh, the best access to good teaching and to bad teaching of any uh, generation in the history of, of the church. And so it's good to access those things. It's, there's nothing wrong with listening to, to other teachers, other, other, uh, other preachers, and, and, and gaining from them. But are you intentionally spending time in Scripture yourself? Are you intentionally gathering and growing in the Word of God so that you can teach others better as well? All right, so... We've had our who, we've had our why, we've had our what, and um, there's one more in the same passage here. So he says, therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. So we had our what there, what else is in there? So who, what, when, where, why, and how, which is left, or what's there? So make disciples of, of all nations, all nations, right? So this is the where, where. And what's another way to say all nations if you're saying it in a where? Blaine. Blaine. <laughs> and Blaine? 55 language groups in Blaine. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Thank you for that fact, Esther. <laughs> um, so the where is everywhere, right? All nations. We as Christians should have a heart for the whole world. We should have a heart for the whole world to, so that people can know the authority of Jesus and so that people can see the authority of Jesus. That's why we have missions that, that are very much focused on, on preaching the gospel. We have missions that are very much on focused on, on showing the gospel. But, but I think all missions need to have both aspects in them, right? That, that we we proclaim the gospel and we show the gospel. We, we teach people about the authority of Jesus and we show them what the authority of Jesus looks like when it's lived out. What it means to love your neighbor. What it means to, to give to others. What it means to live generously and selflessly the way that, that we are to live in God's kingdom under Jesus' authority. And, and you know, people uh, complain about missionaries destroying cultures. And, and sadly, in the past, you know, like there's, there, there, there has been um, missions that, that have, instead of proclaiming the kingdom of God, have proclaimed the kingdom of Britain or the kingdom of America and, and tried to make people into us. And I don't think that's what the, the heart of missions is in the same way that when I bring the gospel to someone, there will be things that change in their lives, but there also be ways that as the unique person that God made them to be, that they worship him and understand him. And that I, even as I bring uh, and disciple someone else, I might be able to learn and grow from them and from their understanding of who God is. And, and the same thing can be true, I think, of nations that, that as we go to other cultures, you know, Jesus was not an American. Um, Jesus uh, was, was something different. God is, is, is above all nations. And so I think that, that, that in different cultures um, that, that, um, that, that they can 
see and understand different aspects of God and, and, and everything. And that as we bring people under the authority of Jesus, I'm not saying that, that we just, it, like that whatever religion they believe, that that's another aspect of God. But as we bring people under the authority of Jesus, different cultures and, and everything are going to bring out things. It's, it's sad when we as a church try to make other cultures like our culture, thinking that we're, we're, we're bringing the gospel, because we miss out on, on uh, uh, what God can, how God can use that culture to, to help us understand and help enlighten us. And so our heart as, as missionaries, even, you know, if you talk to the Hectons, their heart is not to make the Thai people into Americans. Their, high, their, 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 their goal is to make the Thai people followers and worshipers of, of King Jesus. Uh, and, and as they do that, that, that they'll have their own Thai expressions of what it means to worship God, their own Thai expressions of, of, of what it means to, to follow him. You know, um, Roichi shared with me that it, that it can be hard sometimes because he, he, he can be frustrated that, like, with the Japanese church that, that um, you know, a lot of their songs will just end up being um, uh, Western songs with Japanese lyrics. You know, like they, they just translate in Japanese. And he's like, you know, what, what I really would love is to hear Japanese songs of worship, for, for, for the Japanese heart to be able to express things. Um, I was just listening to a podcast the other day of an of, of, uh, author that was, he had written a book called Reading Romans Through, uh, Through Eastern Eyes, and, and I guess I haven't read the book, so I'm not like plugging it, but I like that idea of recognizing that, that, um, that, that all cultures are, are, are created by God, all cultures are for him, and, and as, as they, we submit to the Lordship of King Jesus, that, that, that we can grow and understand together as a church, as a worldwide church. And so that should be our passion. Our passion should be to go to the nations. That's why, as a church, we spend so much money, uh, uh, money like uh, uh, over a tenth of, of, of our, our budget every year we spend supporting missions. We, we support people in Peru. We support people in Thailand. We support people in Kenya. We support people around the world that are bringing this gospel to others. And yet, as Esther pointed out, uh, all nations can sometimes be right at our front door. That there are, that there are how many, 50, how many? Uh -huh. So, if, I don't, yeah, well, we'll say 55, so we'll go with it. 55 different languages right here. And I think that we, um, as Americans, and, and um, I might step off your toes here, but I think we have to be careful um, this is where, where we can, can be in danger of, 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 of confusing the kingdom of, of God with the kingdom of America. Um, and that, that, um, that we should be uh, excited about the opportunity of other uh, peoples coming to us that we can share the gospel with. That we have that opportunity that, um, you know, that, that God may not call us to go overseas, but if people are coming here, um, and, and, and they don't know Jesus, that should not be a threat to us, but that should be an excitement to us because it's an opportunity to share. We are not, uh, it, it, you know, if we believe in Matthew, what, what, what Jesus taught us in the book of Matthew, that, that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed that starts small and grows into a big tree. If we believe that it's like a little yeast that works through the whole dough, we are not fearful of other beliefs because if, if Christianity is true, then... Uh, then it will conquer. If Jesus really is king, then it will prevail. People uh, will see the truth. And so we do not fear uh, uh, different beliefs. We, 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 we rejoice at the opportunity to share, and we take those opportunities. How do we treat our neighbors from other cultures? How do we view our neighbors from other cultures? Are we excited to be able to love them, to show them what it looks like to live under the authority of King Jesus, and to be able to share well, what it means to live under the authority of King Jesus. Are we going into all the world? And some of us here might be called to overseas missions, right? It can be a scary thing, a hard thing, but I encourage us to pray about it. Like, are you called either long-term or short-term to go, to go into all the world, to proclaim the goodness of, of King Jesus and the authority of King Jesus? All right, so that's the... Who, what, when, where, not when. Lastly, I just gave it away. <laughs> uh, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we have two more questions left. And the next one that I just gave away is when. When, right? And he said, until, until when? End until the end of the age, until the end. Right? This is a lifelong mission we are on. 
You know, we're not, we're not the, the Mormon church where you go out for two years and, and that's our mission. Our mission is a lifelong mission. We are to proclaim the authority of King Jesus. We are to proclaim his love for the world. We're to proclaim his desire for people to be a part of his kingdom. We're supposed to proclaim that until the end. We don't give up, even when we feel discouraged, even when we feel despair. Um, You know, last week as we were talking about the resurrection, um, uh, a verse I almost closed with because it's been one of my favorite verses ever since we talked about the resurrection a couple years ago in 1 Corinthians is, is, um, uh, do not become weary of doing good, for we know, uh, always knowing that in the Lord our labor is never in vain. Right? That, that if we have the resurrection mindset, that, that the, the deadness of the world, the evil of the world, the sin of the world does not prevail against us because we know that the resurrection has conquered those things. And so we do not become discouraged by things, but we continue, we persevere in our mission. And yet I think that the bigger thing of what makes it hard for us to persevere is not the discouragement, but it can be also the comfort. The comfort that we can get so focused on amassing stuff, on being comfortable, on being happy, on seeking pleasure, that we become complacent to this mission that we've been called on. This is a mission of sacrifice. This is a mission not of seeking self, but of seeking uh, the kingdom of God and seeking the good of others. And it becomes very, very easy for us to, to get caught up in, in, in making sure we're comfortable, making sure we're taken care of, making sure things are good with us, and then as we have time, to spend time on mission. But the reality is, is that, that that mission should be our first priority, right? Dan uh, has shared this before, and I, I find it very challenging and insightful, is, you know, we, if, if we really have this idea that we are all on mission as a church, that we've all been sent out as disciples of Jesus, you know, our, our missionaries, every month, they send a newsletter to, uh, to kind of tell us, you know, thanks for supporting us. This is what we've been doing, and this is how God is working. Imagine you had to send out a newsletter every month as a missionary. What would you be able to say? What have you been doing? How have you been spending your time? How have you been seeing God work? Are you spending all your time for yourself, or are you spending time on mission for Jesus? And I recognize the analogy there's not perfect, but I think it's a sobering and a challenging thing for us to, to really look at if we're not on mission, if we're not doing things, why not? All right, so we have our who, what, when, where, why, and we have one more question here that he answers. Be sure of this, I am with you always. So what's the last one? The how. How. And, and, and the how is that, oh, uh, the, the how is really actually the beginning and the end, right? So it's, it's interesting. This, the commands were in the middle. Go and make disciples of all nations, you know, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them all to, to obey all that I've commanded you. But it's the, that sandwiched between this idea of I have all authority, all authority's been given to me, and I am with you always. These statements of who Jesus is. And so the how, how do we complete this mission? We do it in the, Jesus' power and Jesus' presence. In Jesus' power, in Jesus' presence. I am with you always. Right, we talked before about, like, we can feel inadequate. We can feel like we can't do it. Um, we can feel like that we're not, not good enough. And you know what? We are inadequate. We can't do it, and we're not good enough. But it doesn't matter because it's not about us. It's about the power and the presence of Jesus. It's about letting him live, with, live in us. It's about letting him take over our lives and, 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 and lead us to be strong where we are weak, to, 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 to help us to do things that we never thought that we could accomplish, not just things for ourselves, but things for his mission, things for his kingdom, to be able to, to, to obey and, and to accomplish things that we never expected. Um, watched an interesting movie last night with Anne. If you have Amazon Prime, I recommend it's on there for free. It's called Mully, and it's about this African man, and it is an amazing story. He's, he started out... Um, in poverty, abandoned by his family, ended up like uh, just this, this amazing like hard worker and everything. And then he built up this like kind of uh, almost empire of different businesses there in Kenya, um, was this like super wealthy man. And then one day God spoke to him and said, I don't want you to work another day of your life. I want you to give everything that you have 
um, to help all these, the, this poverty that's around you. And so he just started bringing children into his house, like just uh, uh, dozens of children at first and everything. And, um, and then like uh, at one point, like money was running out, their, their, their money was running out and, and his wife went to him and said, our money's running out. He's like, why are you coming to me? Go to God about it. And they, they prayed about it. The next day, like a, a truck full of food showed up at their house that like lasted for, for a long, long time. Um, and then just... Um, uh, and, and, you know, he's, he's big that he didn't want things to be sustained by the West because he had been a beggar in his life and he didn't want to be a beggar his whole life. And so they, they in the, the home they built for the kids, they made a farm, so it's self-sustaining and everything. And, and it's just an amazing story. He's helped over 12,000 children um, uh, out of poverty um, and, and everything. Um, and it's because he was obedient to do something that he felt like he couldn't do. He said, everybody thought I was crazy, and I even questioned myself sometimes, um, but, but he was obedient to do what God had called him to do. He was able to do something hard because he trusted God. Are we able uh, to do that? Do we have that kind of level of trust? We are able because it's not about our power, it's about his power, but do we have that kind of trust that if God calls you to do something difficult, God calls you to do something, uh, something that, that, that seems crazy to the world around you, that you, are, that you trust that you are able to do it by his power and his grace. Because ultimately, it is not about us. It is about the one who, who loves us and gave himself for us. And so with that in mind, let's move into communion. So Joe, if you want to come on up here, Kale. So you can send one person from each uh, family group up um, to, to get the number of, of uh, cups that you need. Um, and then you can hold this and we'll take it all together in a few minutes. Gospel according to Matthew, the book, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. God, we thank you that as we reflect, not just on, on today's passage, but on this whole book, God, we thank you that Jesus has been made king of your kingdom. we thank you that, that he has shown us that we don't have to live under the powers that rule this world 
we can live under a greater power. A power that was, uh, had the power to rule over everything and yet submitted himself even to the point of death. We take this bread and we say thank you for that love that was willing to suffer for the sake of your kingdom. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. God, we thank you for this mission. We pray that we would live it well, that we would take it seriously, that we would want to, to grow closer to you as your disciples in prayer and studying our Bible. That we would have a passion for others in Blaine, others around the world to know about you. Um, and that we would have a heart for your gospel to go out, God. And not just that we would support others, but that we would be proclaiming your kingship both in our lives and in our words, God. Thank you for this blood that purchased us and brought us into your kingdom. And may we just have a heart to bring others into your kingdom as well. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Go in peace. Um, if you'd like to visit, you can um, stand outside or we can spread out if you're not wanting to be outside with the smoke. Maybe you can spread out just in the sanctuary here, try to keep social distance and masks. Um, if you'd like to just scoot out, you can use uh, this back door here uh, to get to your car.